Welcome back to my channel, it's Shantae's Way here today and today I'm going to be talking about the most common mistakes that people make when they're having natural hair. Now these are my common mistakes, um, some things that I noticed over time or some things that I've noticed other people do. Um, doesn't mean that it's 100% right or that everyone's going to feel that these are mistakes but these are just what I feel are the biggest mistakes and the reason why some people have like stunted hair growth or their journey isn't as, let's say fun, <laughs> their natural hair journey isn't as fun or they run into so many issues. So I wanted to quickly put a video up on my channel because out of all the videos that I have on my channel, I've never done anything like this. And I think it's because I don't want people to take this and be like, oh, I'm doing this wrong, I'm doing this wrong, and just it be like a negative type of video. But just think of this as a video to help you. And if you're doing any of these things, don't beat yourself up. Just see what's best for you, if it's better for you to change it, or if has it been working for you on some occasions. So you just have to figure it out from that standpoint. So the number one mistake that I see all the time with the natural hair community or people with their hair in general is that they get way too impatient with their hair. Like I've seen people go natural and they're like so excited about it and then three or four months down the road or maybe even a year down the road, they're like, okay, I give up, I'm not doing this anymore. And they just completely give up on their journey or on their hair and they revert back to their old ways. So it's a very big mistake to do this in my opinion because you're not really giving your hair enough time. And the first year of me going natural, if I would've just gave up, then my hair would've been at the at a really really weak state and definitely not as healthy as it is today basically the first year of me going natural my hair was still transitioning i still had straight pieces my hair still looked a mess i was still looking at girls on instagram like dang it i want my hair to be like that but it was only the first year of me being natural and i know a year seems like a long time but in reality when you're first starting something the first year is not that long you still have a lot to go and if you keep on with your journey and you keep going and you keep finding ways to make things a lot better than what they are in that moment then of course two years three years down the line it's going to be amazing like my hair two or three years down the line was way better than when I first started in my first year have some patience with your hair don't give up on it so quickly the second thing that I see is a common mistake and I actually was detangling the wrong way when I first went natural so this is not you know to say that I wasn't doing any of these things because these are actually things that I was doing. Some of them are things that I was doing when I first went natural as well. But number two, of course, is detangling the wrong way. When you detangle your hair the wrong way, when you're when you're not patient with your hair, when you detangle, it makes for a lot of shed hair. It makes for a lot of breakage. So you want to detangle your hair correctly. And my suggestion is to detangle it with a leave-in or some type of liquid base or water. You don't want to detangle your hair with dry on dry hair, especially if you have hair similar to my daughter, which her hair is 4A. Um, you do not want to detangle that type of hair without moisturizing it first because moisturizing is going to make it a lot more slippery it's going to make it a lot better some people even find that detangling in the shower is a hundred percent better than doing it any other way so you just have to figure out what works for you i prefer to do it on wet hair as long as my hair is wet then it will detangle great if i'm in the shower it works even better and i realized that with my daughter's hair it detangles a lot better when it's soaking wet so make sure you're detangling your hair right and that you're not kind of just like using the wrong detangling tools and pulling your hair and trying to use a rat tail comb like you know that's not gonna work on natural hair so just it's better to use something that is when detangling either to use your fingers or to use something that's geared towards natural hair such as a dimming brush um, a wide tooth comb can sometimes work and the tangle teaser those are the three things that I recommend number three is overusing products I know that this is probably not something that people would classify as a mistake but if you are constantly overusing products you're putting products in your hair just way too much then your hair is going to start to get a lot of buildup and your hair is going to stop reacting to products because you have so much of 
the product in your hair. So I see a lot of times where people will use so much product and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> now, I know that we all can get heavy handed with products, including me, but I'm just saying that at the same time, you wanna make sure that you're not putting a lot of product on your scalp. It can just cause a lot of clogging and it can cause a lot of buildup in my opinion. So if you're overusing the product, if you're putting too much of a product, that could be why your hair could be looking way down or that could be where your scalp is always itching. I just think that you should measure out how much product you know for a fact your hair needs and don't overdo it. Which brings me to number four, you always want to make sure that you're listening to your hair. It's great to get inspiration and information from people, but if you try an exact method and it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean that that person was wrong or it doesn't mean that your hair is not doing the right thing. It just means that your hair may need something different. So if you try something and it doesn't work, then go away from it, try something else, and you may come back to it a little bit later when you've actually mastered your hair and know how your hair works and now that method works. So actually listening to your hair and seeing what it is that your hair likes, what it is that your hair doesn't like is definitely the best thing to do, not listening to your hair and just trying to go off like a strict method. Like I see a lot of people who comment like, what porosity are you or um, what this are you? And I'm just like, I recently just figured this stuff out as far as porosity and stuff because I started off my journey just basically doing trial and error. So to me, I just always figured out things by doing them and by trying them out. So a lot of times I don't follow porosity. I don't follow this and that. I just follow what works for my hair. So I'm doing a whole bunch of different methods that are from the normal porosity, low porosity, every porosity. I'm doing whatever works for my hair in that moment. Not to say that it's wrong to follow those porosity um, routines and stuff because they do help. It does help to know that type of stuff. But listening to your hair is always going to get you the right answers. All right, so then fifth thing that I feel that is a huge mistake, and I did this, I just recently made a video, well, last year I made a video about it, and that is over co-washing. Oh my gosh, when I first went natural, I was like, no shampoo, I'm not shampooing, only once a month. I worked for my hair for a while, and then after a while, my hair started to feel limp, it wasn't really responding a lot to products, and it was just like, my hair was looking way down all the time and I was like, what is going on? Until I went to a natural hair show and I met up with people and they were telling me that co-washing is not to be overdone. Like shampoo can't be replaced with co-washing. Um, and you don't want to do that as much as I was doing it. So when you are wanting to stay on the schedule with co-washing, I do think that you should shampoo more than co-washing. So maybe you should do shampooing every um, two weeks and then co-wash, in between or however you want to do it your hair just collects so much over time and it can really make your hair feel way down I just think that is not the right thing my hair has been a lot better with styles now that I changed that small thing in my routine and next thing that I find is a huge mistake is to over manipulate your hair um, a lot of people are always asking me like Shante how does your hair get that long how did your hair get that long and when my when I tell them what I did they're always like oh that's too simple simple is always better if you do things in a simple way you most likely get results so in my opinion so when it comes to my hair I don't over I don't over manipulate it I don't always wear tight styles and stuff like that. And I just let my hair breathe a lot. Like I don't do much of anything to my hair. I've never even colored my hair. So when it comes to my hair, I'm very, very low manipulation on it. And that has worked for me very, very much. So it's a common mistake to me to see people who do that, who do so much to the hair and try so many things on their hair. And then it kind of stunts their growth or their hair is not exactly where they want it to be for that reason. So I know you guys did not think that I was gonna do an entire video Video without mentioning health. I feel like that the most common mistake is just not being healthy on the inside. Because when you're not healthy on the inside, it does show within your skin, within your hair, it shows on the outside. So 
Health is way more important than what we make it seem. So when you're healthy on the inside, it always comes out on the outside. It comes out in your hair and your skin, and it's very important to stay healthy. So a common mistake is to think that you have to keep your hair healthy, but then when it comes to your personal life or your body, you don't have to do the same. And you do want to do the same so that they can have, so that you can have the same results and so that you're healthy hair and your healthy living can kind of come together and create magic. So when you do one thing and not the other, it doesn't come together as well. Right, so the next thing is cutting your hair way too much. If you're new to my channel, you probably won't know this, but I do not cut my hair a lot. I definitely keep it at a bare minimal. I just got my hair cut when I got it straightened um, a few months ago, but that was like the first time I got an actual cut. Um, when it comes to cutting your hair, you want, if you want hair growth, if you don't want hair growth, then you know, you can do whatever you want. But if you're a person who wants your hair to grow, if you're continuing to, to cut it all the time, then you're not going to have long hair because you keep cutting it. And a lot of times people say, oh, well, you have to get your ends trimmed and then they'll get their ends trim but they get the inch trim entirely too much it's like a habit and it becomes you not trimming your ends it becomes you just cutting your hair so it's a very common mistake for people to not feel as if their hair was not growing but really they're just getting their ends trim and cutting their hair a lot too much a lot too much way too much <laughs> this next one is probably going to upset somebody I know it will but dyeing your hair too much coloring your hair too much is going to affect it. And a lot of times people are like, oh, it doesn't affect my hair. Like I can do it, it doesn't matter. No, every time you do something to alter your hair, it affects it. So when you color your hair, it affects it. Not to say that you can't color your hair, especially if you do it a very um, safe way, but you want to make sure that you're not doing it too much. Like there is a lot of times where I'll see that people are going like pink, blue, green, yellow, all in one month. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so that can definitely do something to your natural hair in a not so good way. So you wanna make sure that you're not coloring your hair too much, just because if you're wanting to have health over maybe appearance, you wanna make sure that you're staying on track with your hair health by not coloring it all the time. That's not good for you, I'm sorry. People get so bored with their hair, which I understand, um, and they don't want to have black hair. Black hair is boring. Um, people like to see color and pretty streaks and stuff. I, I already know, I get it, but you don't want to do that too much. The last and final common mistake that I see is people skip deep conditioning. And I don't know why, I can never figure out why people don't want to deep condition, but there's some people who are completely against deep conditioning and I, I still can't figure out why because deep conditioning is like the number one rule if you want healthy hair. So deep conditioning your hair is very important. It gives your hair moisture, it gives your hair lots of nutrients that it needs and it's definitely where your hair gets the most benefits in your routine so if you're just skipping over roots over deep conditioning you're just shampooing and conditioning your hair and then you're done and then on top of that you're using bad products um your hair is not going to be as vibrant and as healthy as it could be right, so besides that those were the only things that i wanted to point out to you guys and i hope that you enjoyed this video let me know down below if i missed anything or what are some common mistakes that you think that naturals make on the hair routine and the hair journey let me know down in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel don't forget to turn on that notification bell and i will see you guys in my next one bye